Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. Marty here, today we're gonna to talk about the least sexy part about business, processes. But despite it being the least sexy, it's actually one of the most important parts. Nobody's business is so complex that this can't be done. This is the big picture. We're not gonna talk about specific pieces of technology. We're not gonna talk about anything like that. We're gonna talk about how you break down and build the machine, which is your business. How do you take a customer from discovering a customer, not so much on the promotional side of things, but then really focus from the point of inquiry through the point of happy customer. How do you break that down? How do you identify the opportunities for you to get more value from your business, process them through as efficiently as, impo as possible, making some great connections, making some happy customers, and getting right into it. Uh, like I said, it's not a super sexy topic, but your ability to dive into this and get this happening and break this down gives you benefits in efficiencies, dollars, cents, loss of productivity, staff time, staff engagement, staff happiness, like we can go on for a long time. But I'm gonna start breaking it down for you. Every business has some form of process that's just like this. Now, I might throw in systems occasionally, but just from habit, but I'll try and get this stuck with process because this is the process of your business. This is the main track. This is the main production line of your business. There's promotion happening, which generates an inquiry. An inquiry generates agreement. Agreement, once you have an agreement, then we're gonna deliver the work. And then there's gotta be things that happen to make sure that you try and retain the staff. Now, is that the entirety of your business? No, most definitely not. But this is the main rail track that we're looking at. How do we take our customers through this? How do we identify the bottlenecks? Where do we break it down and make it better so that you can get some wins out of that depending on what's happening in your business? There's a couple of key pieces that will bolt into this. You'll have a process here around um, a delivery, which is your operations and how does that actually happen? This is around sales here. So you could have like project management software and things that happen here. You might have a monday.com and Asana, things like that. You might have an Insightly, a Capsule, a Salesforce, the list goes on there. Doesn't matter specifically what type of programs you have. It's, we're talking about what is the process of what actually has to happen. Big one here on the bottom is obviously we've got um, an accounting and payroll, particularly here, and inventory. So down the bottom we've got accounting, payroll, similar, maybe, uh, and then inventory. How do these things bolt in to our main process to make it work as efficiently as possible. So this can be really overwhelming if you've never broken your business down and thought about it like this. This is potentially what's happening if you have started your business from scratch because if you've started your business from scratch, you probably handled every single one of these areas yourself. And that's great. And as it grows, a lot of this stuff is subconscious to you because you've done it a thousand times. You just know it in the back of your head. As you grow, if you're trying to grow, if you've gone from yourself to three, five, 10, 15 staff, now you've got to start to disperse that knowledge and give that to other people in your team so that they know exactly what's happening. Having this set up gives you the capacity so that we avoid this issue where the marketing and promotion people or the person in your business that wears that hat works well with this person because they understand that the flow of things is all interrelated. When you build this out, we're gonna talk about automation later, but the first step in being able to automate your business is mapping it out like this. Now, like I said, if you haven't done this before, it can be quite an overwhelming process because you think, oh shit, there's opportunities for us to fix a leaky bucket from the point of inquiry to the point of agreement. That's the real pain point in my business. Maybe the point of pain in your business is 
how you deliver the work and, and what goes on there. Maybe the pain point in your business is how you bolt in the inventory and your project management to the delivery because the delivery piece is actually seven steps and it can become really complex. So what we're gonna dive into now is how do we start to get the right type of process, not system, the right type of process for you and how you can use that at each stage to break it down, get your team more on board and learn what's going on, get the right information and start to find some wins immediately in your business just by doing things slightly better, looking for a two, three, four percent improvement in how you do it, which could generate a seven, eight, nine, ten percent improvement in the bottom line that's happening at the end of the day. So I'll dive into that in a sec. All right, so one of the big challenges that people have when I talk about processes is they go, you're gonna go step by step and the first thing and then the second thing and the third thing and it becomes a massive pain in the ass if you have to think about it in all that kind of detail. But if we take a step back and look at process, there's three types of process that work for different types of businesses. Now, my business is largely centered around service-based businesses and then I work a lot with uh, medical professions, so chiropractor, physio, and that type of thing, or trades, so plumber, chippy, mechanic, those type of businesses. All of those businesses have a lot of variables, so a one, two, three type process doesn't really work for them. So I'm gonna show you how we talk about that and how we think about that and give you a different way to look at it in your business. The first type of process that was developed is like Henry Ford. He came up with a production line, it's great because he does the same thing over and over and over and over again. He builds the same car over and over again. You can have it in any color you want so long as it's black. No variables. Great for a one, two, three process. When you work in a service-based business, say you build houses for a living, there's a ton of variables. So you're not building a Model T Ford over and over again, you're building a different house. So the next type of process that people started to think of was if then. If this happens, then do this. And if we say, okay, well, if they want the car in black, then do this. And that type of system works, works okay if there's a very limited number of variables. But again, if you're a service-based business, if you're building houses, if you're solving problems for somebody, if you're a marketing company and you're trying to create a marketing campaign and generate inquiry for somebody, there's a million different variables. So there's no way that an if-then type process could work for you. So it's not about one being right, wrong, better or worse. It's about having the right one in your business that's gonna get the results that you need. So the one that we come back to which not a lot of people talk about, but we start to talk about an objective-based process. An objective-based process is one that says, well, what we do is we create an ad that generates engagement from the viewers. How do we do that? Well, there's a di different things that work there and there's different pieces that back end that, but that's the objective that we're looking for. That's the thing that you're doing time and time and time again. So if I clear this out and we start to look back at that process again, and we say, okay, from the time of promotion to inquiry, then we go through to agreement. It's long, I'm gonna shorten that up. Uh, agreement and we deliver the work and then we retain how does this process work in an objective base for your customers? I talk about this in horizontal milestones and vertical steps. So horizontal milestones, this is the first piece, then the next piece, then the next piece. In order to go from an inquiry horizontally to an agreement, there will be a process. There's things that you need to do in terms of qualify the client, find out what they need give them a proposal, get a quote together. Whatever it is in your business, there'll be a bunch of different variables, but you can start to work these out. Now, your horizontal journey or your horizontal milestones won't be this simple. This might be three to four. This might be two to three. This might be seven to 10, depending on what you do. Uh, if you're a lawyer, 
and you take on a matter that has 50 different components in it and is gonna take six months, then this might be quite a long piece and there's a lot of repetition in there. You go back to a piece in the journey earlier. The point being here is that in your business right now, I would challenge you to think about it in this kind of train track manner and identify where are the most pain points for you? Where are the bottlenecks for you? Do you generate a lot of inquiry, but you don't get a lot of agreements? Do you struggle to generate the inquiry that you need? Do you have work knocking at the door and you've got lots of possibilities to do more work, but the delivery is a real challenge for you? You're not sure how those things work? These, once you start to break this down piece by piece by piece by piece, then you can start to get a real feel for what's happening. And there's a couple of things that will really start to benefit for you here. You can get your staff to start to contribute to this. When you put your staff in the room, and this is something that I love doing with a group of people, is when you put the staff in the room, you say, okay, talk to me about what this happens. Talk to me about what happens here. Talk to me about what happens here. We start to build what I call a, a skeleton or a framework for, for, for how that business process works. And all of a sudden, staff start to say, oh shit, well, I work down this end and I could make that happen and I could do that better. And then somebody else says, oh, I work down this end and I can make that happen. And we see a linkage between, well, if this happens really well, then this is done really well. If I could find out this piece of information here, that would make this piece down here work so much better. This problem here, we can solve it back there. This promotional problem, if we gave an offer to retain people or bring people back, we could solve it that way. It eliminates that silo thinking which can happen where I just focus on my job and I do that and I don't give a shit about anybody else. This is the basis for having a bit of team. This is the basis for getting roles, responsibility, accountability. When you give people an objective that they have to do, if I'm the BDM in my business, my objective is to generate this. If I can do that, I'm given freedom within how I do that, I can come up with the best process to shuffle this forward. One of the big challenges in business at the moment is there's a word floating around that's very sexy and very attractive, which is automation. This, that train track that I had up, there's pieces within that that can link together. Our, soft, our accounting software can link to our CRM, which can link to our project management software, which can link to our operational manual. There's all this kind of fancy stuff that could happen, and that would mean that basically just with a click of a button, all of it works. Trouble is, if you can't draw it and you don't know what the process is, you can't automate it. So automation is like way down this end at your, you know, 85 to 100 percent kind of that's the exciting kind of maximum productivity that you can achieve if you're back here at 60 percent or 70 percent this is a quantum leap this is like running from brisbane to sydney it's a long way away so what we want to do is start to build out what is the framework? What are the key milestones? Where are the challenges that you face in your business? So we build a framework and then we get the staff engaged and we understand, okay, well, if this is the framework, where could we improve this business already? And then we look at, okay, well, we've got six different software systems in this business. So if we could cut out one of them and this one could do this piece, then we'll work on that. And now, we're starting to get somewhere close to automation. But so many businesses could take monumental progress forward in here just by building this framework, having the right type of process and empowering staff to do their job better and give them some, some progress to actually get the results which you're looking for. The big challenge with this is that it takes time. It takes time to dedicate to this. It takes time to break this down. It takes time for you to look at this 
objectively and critically and say, okay, well, we could do that better, we could do this better, this is a challenge. This is what we do really well. This is when it works really well. This is how we duplicate that again and again. This framework, this is not the framework, but that framework is not impossible to build in any business. Every business has one, whether you can draw it or not, you have a process that you take your customers through. Like I said, it happens. It's happening, that's why you have a business. That's why there's money in the bank, maybe not as much money, maybe lots of money, but if you have money in the bank because you deliver product service to, to a customer, you have a process of how you do that, you may not have it documented, you may not know it, it might not be subconscious to everybody, but you have one. So being able to take it, look at it, critically analyze it, and break it down is gonna give you massive impact within your business. And although it's not sexy to do, it's not fun to do, when I tell people I work and look at like a, the process of your business, this is the look that I usually get. Because it's shit, sad, boring, don't care about that, just want to make good, want the end result. Want to automate things, want to have things that just click a button and they all work together. Yeah, well you can't do that if you don't build a really solid wireframe of this is actually how the business works. And if you've been in your business, if you've grown your business, it's really hard for you to do this because you've got to take a step back seven layers and pull things out of your subconscious that actually just happen automatically for you. So not to say that it can't be done, can be done, just harder where you do. So the more effort you put into making this happen and establishing this is a really solid framework, this is my staff are engaged, this automation piece is the last piece, not the first piece. So we've covered a lot. This is building the machine that is your business. Process might not be sexy, but it is integral to the benefits of your business. We've looked at how do you build a framework? Where are the key challenges in your business? How to identify them? What's the difference between process, software? How do you make sure that you've got the right things in place? What are the right type of processes for you to have? And can you use a few more objective-based processes rather than a step one, step two, step three? Can you break down the high level milestones that your customer is gonna go through and then start to look at the vertical depth within that and engage your staff to look at how they can do these things better. As I said, this can be really challenging if you've been in business for years, you've got it really ingrained, you've started it from scratch. A lot of this will be subconscious in your brain. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's not better, it's not worse. I love breaking this stuff down. One of my favorite things is actually when people say, no, you can't do that in my business, there's no process, it's too complex, there's too many variables, bullshit. Yeah, I'm yet to meet somebody that I haven't been able to break this down for. Um, love it, good at it, it's not better or worse, it's just how my brain works. If you're struggling with it and you can't get your head around it, give me a shout, tea up a coffee or frothy, and we'll see what we can make work. But the things that you can do now is take five to think about where are the biggest headaches for you in your business? Are they in a promotional side of things and generating inquiry? Have you got a leaky bucket from inquiry through to agreement? Or does that just really take a long time? Do you get a lot of inquiry, but then you've got to work through it for two, three, six months? Once you get an agreement, how well do you deliver the work? Is it a staff, inventory, challenges? Well, how do all those pieces come together? Because that can be really challenging and that might be the area where you get a lot of benefit. So making all of those pieces, and like I said, it, it is a machine. It's a, it's a machine, there's no one piece that's more important than the other. It's about having all of the pieces work together. So take five, think about your most important piece. Go, okay, the challenge for us is here, break just that section down. Break down how you deliver work because you can do it in piece by piece. You can break down how promotion works, you can break down how inquiry works, you can break down agreement and then delivery and do them all individually and then come back and bolt them together rather than trying to do it all at once. Because if you try and do it all at once, chances are you're gonna get overwhelmed, fall back into your old ways, continue operating at whatever efficiency level you're at now. So take a stab at it and just piece by piece by piece, start to make sure they work together and don't get carried away with trying to automate things because you'll end up with a tail wagging the dog and the cart in front of the horse and all the bad things that you don't want. 
get amongst it, keep it simple, get your staff engaged, and gain some real benefits for not only yourself, but for your customers, your staff, and your suppliers to make it all work together. All the best with it, and here's the kicking goals.